Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to a new video. Today I'm sharing my past week of dinners with some recipes that are great for summer evening meals. On Monday I made a creamy spinach pea and basil pasta. It started by peeling and finely mincing up three cloves of garlic. I then heated up a few tablespoons of olive oil in a pan on a medium heat then added in the garlic to lightly fry it off for a couple of minutes. I next added in 150 grams of fresh spinach leaves as well as half a cup of frozen peas and then I just continued to cook that off until the spinach wilted right down and the peas cook through. I then seasoned well with some sea salt and black pepper and then over in my food processor I added a 300 gram block of well drained silken tofu. Then I added in the garlicky spinach and peas as well as a good handful of fresh basil, stalks included, the zest of half an unwaxed lemon and the juice of half and a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast. Blended that up until it was nice and smooth and creamy, running a spatula around the bowl a few times in between. I had then just put two portions of pasta on to cook and just as it was al dente, I reserved a third of a cup of the pasta water and drained off the rest. I then added the pasta back into the empty pan along with half of the creamy spinach pea and basil sauce. The other half can be frozen or stored in the fridge for three days. Stirred that through and then squeezed in the juice of half a lemon, seasoned really well with more salt and black pepper, then gave it a final stir through until the pasta had thickened the sauce slightly. Serve that with some grated cashew parmesan. I will write the recipe for this below, but I basically keep a wedge of this in the fridge and grate it on top of a dish. It's so cheesy and good. I also grated on some more lemon zest and scattered some fresh torn basil leaves over the top. The best kind of creamy pasta sauces are made with silken tofu so smooth every time and I love experimenting with new flavours. It's also great because tofu is neutral in taste so it works with whatever you pair it with. This is a good way to add in a load of spinach, the peas add in even more protein along with the tofu and the flavours of the garlic, the lemon and the fragrant basil. It's such a lovely summery pasta dish. On Tuesday night, I made my seitan beef and pepper stir fry, started by heating a little oil in a pan. I then crushed, peeled and finely minced three cloves of garlic as well as de-seeding and finely chopping a red chilli. Added the garlic and the chilli to the pan to fry off and then I took a jar of Bayona's seitan pieces, which are in a very light tamari and ginger marinade. I first poured in the liquid as this makes a really nice sauce and then I tore up some of the bigger chunks of seitan into smaller pieces and added them in. I then added in a tablespoon of tamari and half a teaspoon of ground white pepper as well as a cornflour slurry. This is a teaspoon of cornflour mixed with three teaspoons of water. This just helps to thicken the sauce. I then increased the heat until the sauce became thicker and more syrupy like this. I left that to simmer and meanwhile I took six of these Turkish long hot green peppers. I de-seeded them and then sliced them very thinly into long strips. I also then took two of these long red sweet peppers. Again, just de-seeded them and sliced them into long thin strips. I added the peppers into the pan and stirred them through well to get them coated in that delicious sauce. I only cooked the peppers for maybe four to five minutes so they had a nice slight crunch to them still. We had this with some noodles, obviously goes great with rice too as a side. I then chopped up some fresh coriander to add over the top and overall it's just such a quick and easy meal to throw together. I'm always cooking with tofu, it's my favourite go-to protein every time but the seitan makes a nice change to that in this dish. For Wednesday dinner, I made a red pesto, slow roasted tomato and basil quiche. I made the quiche base by adding 200 grams of plain flour to my Magimix food processor, followed by 140 grams of cold vegan butter that I'd just cubed. I then pulsed that together to combine and break up the butter, then I left it to blend while I gradually poured in six tablespoons of cold water 
and kept it blending until it formed a ball itself in the blender bowl. Just dusted a clean work surface with some flour, then roughly shaped the dough before dusting a rolling pin with some flour. And then I rolled out the dough to roughly fit over my baking dish. Just laid it over and then I pressed it down into the center first and then molded the edges of what will be the crust. And once it was pretty much even, I then used a fork to prick the base all over. I then placed that in the fridge to chill for 10 minutes and preheated the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. I next took 300 grams of cherry tomatoes. I used colored tomatoes in different variations and sliced all of those in half. I arranged those in a baking dish with the cut side facing upwards, then drizzled over some olive oil and seasoned with some sea salt flakes. I then placed those in the oven to slow roast. Next, I made my red pesto by adding half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes in some oil to a smaller bowl in my Magimix food processor. And to that, I then added a handful of fresh basil leaves, stalks included, then a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast, two tablespoons of pine nuts, around a tablespoon of lemon juice, one garlic clove and a good pinch of sea salt. Blended that up until nice and creamy. I would usually add more oil for a red pesto, but I didn't want there to be too much liquid in the quiche. I transferred that to the main bowl and added in a well-drained 300 gram block of silken tofu with two tablespoons of chickpea flour, the zest of half a lemon and lots of black pepper and then I blended that together until nice and smooth. I removed the quiche base from the fridge and blind baked it with parchment paper and rice for 15 minutes. Then removed it from the oven and discarded the paper and rice before putting the base back in the oven for another 10 minutes to cook in the center. I then removed the base and the tomatoes at the same time. The tomatoes should be nicely roasted at this point and the majority of the liquid cooked out of them. I then placed the tomatoes in the base of the quiche, reserving some for the top. Again, cut side facing up picked some fresh basil, tore it up and scattered that over the top. And then I spread on that red pesto silken tofu filling. I brushed a little oat milk around the edge of the crust, which just helps it to go nicely golden. And I put the reserved tomatoes in the top of the quiche with some more fresh basil. I then placed that in the oven to bake again for another 45 minutes. Meanwhile, I made a herby potato salad. I boiled 15 new potatoes and then I left them to cool. I added them to a bowl with around three tablespoons of vegan mayonnaise, the juice of half a lemon, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and then a small handful of chopped fresh parsley, as well as some chives, seasoned with salt and black pepper. Gave that a really good mix through. I have so many of these amazing chive flowers in my garden at the moment, which are edible. So I added some chive flowers over the top as well as some homegrown microgreens. Removed the quiche from the oven once done and left that to fully cool down before we ate it. I also grated over some more of that cashew parmesan cheese and tore some fresh basil over it too. Had half of the quiche with the potato salad and just a green salad on the side. I love making quiche because I then have leftovers for lunch the next day and it's even better when it's been sat chilling in the fridge. The crust is buttery, crumbly, melts in your mouth. The pesto, tomato and basil filling so tasty and I always love it with a good potato salad. On Thursday, I made my tofu meatballs, this time with a teriyaki sauce. I added a block of very firm tofu to my food processor. I skipped the lemongrass this time, but just added in the two spring onions, shallot, one de-seeded red chili, a chunk of peeled ginger, three cloves of garlic, a handful of fresh coriander, the zest of a lime, a tablespoon of vegan fish sauce. This is salty enough, so I then just seasoned with a quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper then added in a third of a cup of brown rice flour and just blended that together until everything was nicely combined and eventually formed a ball in the feed processor like this. I then took a tablespoon at a time of the mixture and rolled it in between the palms of my hands to create a ball. It makes 12 in total and then I just set those aside in the fridge for an hour to chill. After an hour, I then just heated a little oil in a pan on a medium heat and cooked eight of the tofu meatballs, just constantly turning them over gently until they turn golden on all sides. 
And then once done, I put them on a plate to the side and reserved the oil in the pan. I then made the teriyaki sauce in the pan using three tablespoons of coconut sugar, a quarter of a cup of tamari, a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, a tablespoon of mirin, a chunk of minced ginger and a teaspoon of garlic powder. Then added in a cornflour slurry and half a cup of water and just stirred that all together, cooking it on a high heat until it reduced and thickened. Once the sauce was nice and syrupy, I then transferred the meatballs back into the pan in the sauce and I gently just turned them in it to coat them all over and to also heat the tofu meatballs back through. I had cooked some short grain brown rice to go with these, but I shared a recipe for a sticky lemongrass version of these recently too, and they go great with noodles as well. Then back in the pan, I put the reserved oil and just left what remained of the teriyaki sauce. Then I added in some tender stem broccoli and also some trimmed whole spring onions and just stir fried those off for a couple of minutes minutes until slightly cooked through but the broccoli kept some crunch to it. I topped it with some sliced red chilli and some chopped fresh coriander then added some lime on the side. The recipe for the sticky lemongrass version of these is over on my blog so I'll link that below but I've enjoyed switching these up a bit and making different sauces to go with them and as I've mentioned before any leftover tofu meatballs can last in the fridge in an airtight container for up to three days for leftovers. This teriyaki sauce works so nicely with the it's sticky, sweet and umami in flavour. Then finally on Friday I made my aubergine pesto lasagna. I first sliced up an aubergine into relatively thin slices. I heated up some oil in a pan on a medium heat and then added in the aubergine slices around seven at a time to fill the pan. And I fried them off until nicely golden on both sides. Repeated that with all of the slices and then placed them on a plate set to the side and just sprinkled them with a little sea salt to draw out any excess moisture. I then started on the tomato sauce. I very finely minced a white onion then crushed, peeled and minced three cloves of garlic, added a little more oil to the pan, then added in the onion as well as the garlic and just fried those off until they began to soften down. Once cooked down, I then added in a teaspoon each of paprika, chili flakes and dried mixed herbs, then a good tablespoon of tomato puree. I turned those through to fry them off and then I poured in a bottle of Mr. Organic's Passata with fresh basil seasoned with plenty of salt and black pepper, then gave it a good stir and left it to reduce right down. I then made a bechamel sauce using two tablespoons of vegan butter, then added two tablespoons of brown rice flour to that and combined them together in the pan to form a roux. I then poured in 500 ml of oat milk gradually and stirring constantly as I poured. I then added in a bay leaf for flavour and kept stirring until the sauce thickened nicely. I had preheated my oven to 180 degrees celsius and then to layer my dish I put some of the marinara sauce in the bottom. I then laid over half of the aubergine slices on top of that and then spread some jarred vegan pesto over the top of the aubergine. I then layered on some lasagna sheets which I just soaked beforehand in some cold water. And then on top of that, I spread half of the bechamel sauce and I then repeated those layers again with the final layer being a mixture of the marinara sauce and the bechamel sauce. I then topped it with some fresh basil leaves and scattered over some grated vegan cheese. And I then put that in the oven to bake for around 40 minutes until the top was a nice color and bubbling away. Once it was out of the oven, I just slice it into four and serve that up. We always end up having two portions each, so there's never any leftovers. I topped it with some more fresh basil and I'd made a big salad to go with it. I usually make my lasagna with minced mushrooms or soy mince but the fried aubergine makes a really nice change. I love the texture of it and it paired with the flavours from the pesto, the rich tomato sauce and the bechamel sauce. It makes for a really nice summery lasagna. And that's it for a week of dinners I had recently. I hope you enjoyed this video. All of the recipes are below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!